So just like everyone else, I have been on a pursuit for the perfect EDC for quite a while. And, uh, you know, I really ultimately like folding knives the best. I, I, did, it tr I did try at one point uh, fixed blades. I even made my own fixed blade. Here's a Nordic style knife I made out of uh, a necklace file. And it holds an edge extremely well. It's pretty difficult to make, actually. Just a rat tail tang, if you can see that there. Hot pressed into the wood. And I did cherry for the keepers, and then birch bark stacked in the middle there. A really, really ergonomic, great feeling handle. Sparks off rocks really well. In fact, if you ever find some fool's gold, this sparks phenomenally off the spine of 01 or 1095 or what have you. Now those two go really well together, but I've been on the pursuit for the perfect perfect uh, nugget, the golden nugget. And that wasn't it, because sometimes you just can't carry uh, a fixed blade with you. And sometimes it, it prints through my shirt a little bit and it draws attention to where I'm carrying a gun, actually. So um, years ago, I had uh, kind of gotten away from the cheap knives and I went to something a little bit better, and I do consider this a little better. This is the Spyderco Resilience which is a large knife. I mean, this thing, yeah, that's that's a good size knife. Looking at about nine and three eighths overall. The blade itself is just a four and a quarter, but by comparison to this six inch knife, this is six inches right on the dot. Most people are used to something about this size when it's open, and this is pretty large. I liked big knives and Pretty much all that I was doing at the time was slicing things, opening packages, that sort of thing. Uh, it didn't take long before I started getting better with knives and trying different things, and I found that I could not rely on these liner locks. Uh, in fact, I don't even trust uh, pressure locks or the, uh, the paramilitary locks. I found lockbacks had a better action uh, for the things that I wanted. You know, you can't mess with them as much. They're not as fun to flick. But that's not the objective for me. Plus, the thin handle scales and stuff like that started to bother me where pocket clip placement was, all those kind of things. I love this knife. Uh, in fact, this knife has almost never been used because it sits in my EDC bag as an emergency blade, uh, just a backup. And it's really, really good condition. If all I ever was going to do was slice this, uh, and this is my second or third in this lineup, this is what I would carry. Um, easily resharpen steel. If I can zoom in a little bit, let me grab magnifying glass. If I can get in here and show you that these edges are just spectacular on spider coes. Very, very slicey, dangerously sharp. And kind of uh, lose their edge quickly. You know, it's a little bit thin, a little bit fragile. But if it's just slicing, you're just working in the kitchen with it even. This is fantastic, but it didn't really make it into my permanent lineup. Um, at one point, I had been pretty excited. And I still am fairly excited about this blade. This is the Cold Steel Fin Wolf with just a flipper edition from an aftermarket company. You can go check out my channel if you want to see more about that. But I was excited when I saw this announced in the lineup because nobody was really making a hard-use Scandinavian folding knife. And the, the, the reason I would say this is a hard-use blade is because of that triad lock. Again, the triad lock, if you're not familiar with it, is the locking system. This isn't a normal lockback knife. There's a special system in here which um, when it's actuated open it receives the brunt of the weight. Positive negative energy is transferred to a pin in here. And so that's the sort of it anyways. But this is definitely an EDC thinness for most people. I'm 6'5", I'm 235 pounds and uh, probably growing. It's just not big enough for me. The, the length is great. If I put it in comparison to this, it's definitely EDC territory. You know, it's, it's shorter by a, a fair margin. Very slim, fits in the pocket again. But when you're doing more and more with blades, and especially if you have a Scandinavian folder, you're probably messing around with wood. And it just doesn't seem to cut it. The OS 8 wasn't my favorite. Uh, although I love the Scandi grind on it, and I still keep this knife, I will not sell it. Um, it kind of becomes more of a beater for me. And that edge with the OS 8, if I can get it to zoom, you know, I do have to touch it up fairly often. It doesn't hold an edge amazingly well. So as long as you don't mind that, it's really not too bad. But I knew there could be something different or better. So I moved on to the 
Cold Steel Ultimate Hunter. And so this I had me excited. First of all, I like orange. I don't know why, but I like orange. I had seen that it had a little bit thicker liners. Well, not liners, but the, the scales, the actual scales. G10 was a little bit thicker. And so that seemed good to me. Uh, it did have a premium steel. So this is uh, number 206 out of the line. And this is CTS XHP. This is when Cold Steel was still using that steel. And it's a premium steel. It is my favorite steel by far uh, for EDC work. But over time, I, I did notice one thing that I preferred differently. So first of all, I'll tell you that these are not the grinds these knives basically come with. The only, um, the only modification I, I usually make is to take away that V grind at the very bottom and convex it. If I can zoom in here again, I convex most of my flat ground blades just a little bit or the V ground blades. Just a little bit. I haven't done that spider coat because it's just a slicer right now, but I kind of like and prefer having that there. And actually, there's a little bit more meat behind the edge of this blade than I liked. I wanted it thinner and still having a, a convex, which sounds uh, contradictory, but it's not. And you can see I've, you know, reprofiled this knife so many times, you hardly even can make out what it is anymore. Yeah, you can't even see the insignia on the back anymore fantastic blade. I did take the knife apart and sand the inner scales when it comes from the factory. The inner scales are just a little bit sharp, a couple ridges. I usually smooth out any jimping because I hate jimping and uh, any um, kind of, uh, what do you call it, any guards on any knife. I usually round those out because I don't use them. I'm not actually worried about my hand slipping forward. I don't do a lot of stabbing tasks and stuff like that. And so uh, one thing that I, I noticed about the knife though was just this grind, which I modified. Now it's actually perfect, it's exactly the way I like it. Uh, the thickness of the of the blade stock material itself is perfect. Triad lock has been functioning very, very well. It's really a great knife. Um, the handle scale, you know, it's a, it's the handle's a little long, probably for most people. It's a little long, not for me though. It's great. The only thing I noticed over time that I, I prefer different was it's still just not quite thick enough. And it's better than most, probably 90% of the folding knives out there. It's better. It's got a nice long handle. It doesn't have a bunch of funky grooves in here, here. You know, it has this, but it doesn't have a bunch of funky stuff. I hate knives like that because your hands never line up with them. Um, only really has the jimping that sticks out bad. But I wanted something thicker and a little bit more substantial because, like I said, I have big hands. And if I work with a knife for a while, as I've learned how to use a knife a little better in the woods and different tasks. These thin knives just don't cut it for me. They give me a lot of hot spots. Um, although, oops, although this knife, uh, it's hard to complain about it. It does pretty well. But on the pursuit for the perfect knife, I finally wound up with the Cold Steel Ultimate Hunter. Oh, I'm sorry, not the Ultimate Hunter. <laughs> Should probably know what I'm going to talk about before I talk. This is the Bush Ranger, the Cold Steel Bush Ranger. And you'll notice it's a little bit different. Doesn't look exactly like a Bush Ranger usually does. This one has been heavily, heavily used. Again, probably the probably the first most used blade on the table. This Ultimate Hunter is a, a close second, and then this is uh, maybe maybe close to tying. But this this blade also came with uh, basically a V grind, and the shoulder wasn't high enough for me, so I, I've heavily modified this, including the fact that this used to be a clip point. If you go ahead and take a picture or uh, take a look at the pictures online of this blade, it was a clip point. It kind of went out and then it dropped down here and it was fine. Uh, it wasn't my favorite. I went ahead and modified that though. I just, uh, in, a, in a safe way, ground this down. The sander kept it cool so I didn't lose my temper or anything. This is S35 steel and so it's just slightly softer uh, but still probably a little bit more tough than the CTS and so that means that it doesn't chip out as easily and, and it's it's really cold in Minnesota all the time so you actually do have to care about that uh, chipping effect as the temperature is dipping you know 20 30 below zero at times you don't want to have something that's so hard that it's just fragile and you don't want to have something that's so soft that it rolls over and so toughness actually matters and S35 is a really good in between uh, see if you can oh you can still tell yeah S35 it used to say you know cold steel and some other things here um, and I used to say Bush Ranger, right in this area. 
but it's just been used to heck. Uh, this edge now has kind of uh, an in-between, between these two blades, I, I've done something here. I kind of gave it a convex in between uh, convex and scandy grind on the blade. And I found that it's exactly what I liked. It's exactly what I needed. If you can kind of see how the light is reflecting there, it does come down to a zero edge, like a scandy would. But you can see with the light here, it's rounded. This, this shoulder is kind of rounded. And that grind is basically rounded. I don't think it's going to be like a 17 degree angle like you'll see on your Moras and stuff like that. But it functions basically like a Scandi. And so since I've removed the shoulder, removed the V grind, and put it into kind of a Scandi, convex Scandi, um, and then uh, sharpen up the spine, the blade portion is perfect. It's got the pocket flipper, which I actually use, one-handed opening. I guess for some people that's a defensive measure. It's got a really nice tip. Uh, that's basically the original tip right there that came with a clip. And I just removed a little material in there because I didn't prefer it. It actually sits flatter in the pocket this way as well. Okay. Moving on down, uh, a huge improvement was the thickness of this blade. If you can tell, this is a, you know, it's not marginal. It's, it's, it's substantial. It's way thicker. And for a guy with big mitts, this is kind of what I was looking for. But, again, it wasn't perfect. Let me go ahead and close this. The way that it came from the factory, again, I took the scales off. This was a hard knife to take apart. Uh, for some reason, it's just very difficult. And when I finally pried it apart, I did a little bit of damage right there, just getting those scales off. The, inners, the inner scales are so sharp. And for a bush ranger, a knife called a bush ranger, you really want it to be smooth everywhere. It should really be a bush crafty kind of knife and a nice thick handle. And unfortunately, it was sharp on the insides, which uh, I guess not a big deal, but most people, the, the amount they were paying for a knife like this, you would hope it would be perfect from the factory. And really, it just had a couple things, a couple hang-ups here and there for me uh, to be called a Bush Ranger. Number one, sanding those inner scales down so it's smooth. Number two, um, edges, places like here, and then up here. So I guess as far as preference goes, I wish it didn't have this cutout here. Because again, I'm not doing so much stabbing task, and, and typically I hold the knife up here so it's thick enough, and I get enough meat. It's almost like holding a fixed blade, truly. But this area here, uh, I took this big, awkward, you know, sharp angle that it had out, and just made it into this soft, rounded, and so it really is soft. Uh, as well as up top, I rounded out this area here. It used to stick up higher above the flipper, and it, it didn't deal with, it didn't, uh, you know, compromise any strength or functionality of the blade. It just stuck up higher and so it was uncomfortable to hold on to when you choke up on the blade. And I went ahead and sanded that down, smoothed it out a little bit. Obviously the blade isn't like polished and all pretty like most people's knives are. I've been using it, you know, I've been using the heck out of it. And so it still retains some, you know, rugged looking features, the grind lines and all that. But functionally, this is the golden nugget, okay? That's what this, this is for me, is an actual golden nugget. It fits all the categories well. Uh, it's the knife I wish Cold Steel would have came out with this year. I know they had some other um, inexpensive knives that they were interested in releasing. But this knife, really, it's better than everything else they produce. I can't think of a single Cold Steel knife that is superior to this uh, for the Bushman's EDC. You know, maybe if you're just opening letters or something like that. This is too much knife for you. You don't care for it. Or if you're, uh, for some reason, just going to baton a bunch with a folding knife, I suppose the SR1 folder is better. Maybe. That's a big maybe, first of all. Uh, but for everyday tasks, people who actually use their knife in the woods, skinning, hunting, uh, or defensively, this knife covers the gamut really, really well. Uh, I know it looks a little bit hooky. It looks like it's got a little bit of uh, too much feature here, and I, I prefer not having these, you know, ground out. I, I just wish it was just a, a fat piece of slab that was round, but it's okay. The only problem is the, the pocket clip, really. That's the only thing that's going to bother you. Otherwise, uh, this is really it. This is the best folding knife I've ever owned. It is my favorite by far, and this is the one that I'm going to recommend. So go ahead and pick one up. That's Gun Minnesotans long-term review of the Cold Steel Bush Ranger. Thanks.